It's not Christmas, but it sure does feel like it. I got this bit of goodies today. Ordered the, it's from Rottweiler Performance in the States. Very reasonably priced if you're an American, but uh, if you're a Canadian, by the time you pay for shipping and duty and taxes and exchange, it's pretty pricey. So I've got uh, cartridge inserts for my forks and some fresh springs for my weight. I'll set those there. And there's the inserts. I'm not taking them out of the bag until they're ready to go in the bike. That's uh, compression dampening on one side and rebound dampening on the other. And some O-rings. And instructions, which, believe it or not, I'm going to use. back and in this box looks like more instructions that's good and some bling actual adjustment for my shock and a spring for my weight the stock shock is garbage there's no adjustment on the stock forks. And the only adjustment on here, on the shock, is the preload adjustment. That's not good enough for me. So, I'm gonna start with the forks. I'm gonna have to use this stand under the engine, lift the bike up. I've got these straps in place to make sure that it doesn't tip over, even if I bump it. And, yeah, I've got to get the forks out, swap everything order, over according to the manual and the instructions. And that might be as far as I get this evening. And then I will put the shock in if I have time tonight or it will wait until the morning. Very excited about this upgrade. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to bother with this bike, but... I do enjoy riding it, and I want to ride it on the track, but I need it to work for me, and the stock suspension is garbage. So basically, when I put this in, in theory I will have better suspension than the RC390R. And then I'll be missing rear sets, which I will eventually get, and clip-ons instead of this system here. The RC390R has clip-on handlebars. And that's really the only major difference. I think they have a different rear cowl than this bike does, but I don't particularly care about that. So, forks are the project for the evening. So, since the forks have to come out before I get started on that, I'm going to loosen up all of this stuff, get everything ready for the wheel to come off and the forks to come out, and then I will lift the bike up and do that stuff. So, first things first, brakes got to come off, fenders got to come off, axle and axle sliders have to get loosened up. Do all that with it on the ground so it's not swinging around at all. So this is disappointing. Turns out that I need there to be a screw on the bottom of this fork for me to be able to put that Olin's kit in. Now, there is a little bit of good news, and that is that I happen to have a uh, 2018 Duke. This is a 2017. When I bought this stuff, it said it fits 2017 and up. I just looked online because obviously these forks won't fit. And apparently it will fit some 2017s. So, 
got to pull the forks off of the duke, put the internals into that, and then I can put those forks onto the RC and put the RC forks onto the duke. And that's really the only option I have here. It's going to be sketchy because I don't really like having two bikes with no front wheel at the same time, but you got to do what you got to do. All right, so the Duke is back together with the forks out of the RC, but this fork is leaking and it is much too late to go buy new seals. So <laughs> I can't change the shock now because the front wheel is off. This is turning into quite the day. I think I'm still gonna drain this fork and uh, get it all set up tonight. That way at least I know how long it's gonna take me to do the other one once I can get the seal changed. And I'm in the light. Okay, this screw here is the reason why I couldn't use the other, the 17 forks. of a Duke or RC fork from 2018. And this is what's going to replace that. This is the compression side. The other fork will do the the uh, rebound dampening. I'm gonna just set this down and check the manual. i remove a few pieces here before this goes in. That, that, and that all come off. Set aside together, and this just slides on in there. All the way in. That is not coming on. Now it is. Now it's getting threaded. Torque that up properly. And then, in goes the oil. Half a liter of oil in there. Pump that until there's resistance, no gurgling, which is all ready. So since this is the compression dampening, there's no resistance pulling it out, but there is pushing it back in. That's the oil doing its job, and it's filled whatever it needs to fill there. Nice and quiet and smooth. I gotta measure the oil. That's what I need to do next. Well, apparently I screwed that up already. Got ahead of myself. I'm supposed to actually put the uh, cap back on. Open that up all the way, put the cap on. That's what happens when you don't read the instructions as you go. So, that is backed out all the way already. Thread this on. Good enough. Finger tighten this. And then extend. 
Alright, 120 millimeters. Get in the air now. We're there. Okay, here's where it gets tricky because I don't have the right tools. The spring goes on, but I need this not to drop too far. And there we go. Got it. Good stuff. We gotta go back over to the clamp. So there we go. This little thing held the spring in place while I got that wrench on there. Now I don't have to worry about it while I do the next steps. Install an O-ring on here and put grease on it. Seems pretty straightforward. Check, make sure I'm doing everything right again. 14 newton meters. That's it right there. That was easy. Get that off of there. Get that off of there. And put this on. Tighten it properly once it's in the bike, because then I have something to clamp it in with and can get some leverage on it. That's it. That is the Olin's cartridge installed. This is how that's sitting. I've got one fork changed here, and that sure is. A lot stiffer than the stock one. This is easy to push down, the other one's quite stiff. So that's good, that's what I wanted. But now I gotta buy a fork seal. So, anyway, I am going to take all this crap off so I can get to the shock. And I might as well do as much of that as I can. There's no way I'm going to be able to finish this or even take the shock out uh, without the front wheel on, but at least I can get things ready. Well, that's neat. You can see that. It's all been worn down on this side. Not because I've been crashing, but because that's been rubbing against the exhaust because of the shock's been getting compressed so much. Hopefully that's not going to happen anymore. Okay, all that stuff is out, so I can get the shock out as soon as I can get the front wheel on. That's it for today. I have to wait until the morning to buy a new seal and then I have to go to work and then I can get off work and try and finish this tomorrow night before I have to go to sleep and then wake up to go to the track. Cutting things tight.